black holes. Everybody's talking about them. Nobody knows one personally. Why is that? I'm going to get to the bottom of it. Today I'm talking to Dr. Geza Juk, Director of Astronomy at the Adler Planetarium and Senior Research Associate at the University of Chicago. Hopefully he can shed some light on these mysterious creatures that we literally cannot see. Why are they so elusive? Let's find out. I'm Stacy Quasar, and this is News at the Speed of Light. Dr. Geza, do I have permission to remove my mask? Carry on. Thank you. Dr. Juk, it is a great honor to be interviewing you today. Your work in the fields of cosmology and high-energy gamma-ray astronomy it was very exciting. With your PhD in physics, you must have gained incredible knowledge into the science and theories behind black holes, yes? Thank you. My first question for you is, if you like black holes so much, why don't you marry one? I think that would be very painful. Black holes have a tendency to rip people apart. And so I'd really prefer to avoid that fate. Interesting. It would be... Something you want to avoid having consummated. Question number two. We have now successfully detected 13 black hole collisions in our universe. Wow, such an unlucky number. Have you encountered any other bad omens lately, Geza? <sighs> Too many. Give me some more details. Perhaps a black cat crossing your path? A broken mirror? <laughs> I think that we can just say that... The times we're living in are, are a bad omen. You heard it here first, folks. The times we are living in are indeed a bad omen. It's just getting worse and worse. Couldn't agree with you more, Geza. Geza, doctor, without leaving the room you're in, you have 10 seconds to grab one object that you would sacrifice to a black hole. Quick, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, Five, four, three, two, one. Your glasses. Now, why did you pick your glasses? One, they were close to me. Two, of another pair. And three, they're made of steel and glass and they might be sort of fun to send in. They're not too massive, so they're not going to emit too much, too many gamma rays or light and heat when I throw them in. I certainly didn't want to throw myself. And, you know, I probably don't want to throw, you know, my printer or my computer or my iPhone. So, so why not glasses? Absolutely intriguing in every way. Question number four. Okay, so, like, you're getting close to a black hole. Time is now passing much slower for you and everyone else is getting older while you stay young. Are you a... Jealous of their ability and willingness to accept the passing of time and die with grace? B. Relishing in the fact that you get to skip the rest of 2020? Or C. Feeling awkward, having to humbly address your forever youth at dinner parties? I think I'll definitely go with B. Happy to skip the rest of 2020. My youth's not going to last long. I'm getting close to a black hole. I'm going to get sucked in pretty quickly. So, if you have an option D dead. That would probably be a pretty good, a good one, too. Stephen, Assistant Stephen, could we add D, dead? D, dead as an option. We'll get that printed. Final question. It's a beautiful Sunday morning at home. The birds are chirping. The sun is shining. You're sitting on your favorite chair reading your latest book when there comes a tippy-tappy at your window. Tip-tap, tip-tap. You look over. Suddenly... A moon witch flies through, passes through your body, like wind passing through the forest. Boom, you look down. Your belly button is now a black hole. Quick, what happens? I die? Probably painlessly. I can't decide whether I would die because I'd be sucked in, or because the black hole would evaporate and explode, or whether material falling in would uh, release energy which would vaporize me. There's a lot of different ways to die of a black hole, especially if it's in your belly button. What do you think would go first into your own belly button, your head or your toes? 
Oh my goodness. That really depends on how uh, whether my belly button's right in the middle of me. Let me think. I'm going to guess that my head would go first. So nobody could hear your toes screaming. Because they don't have mouths. Absolutely the most fantastical and informative interview I've ever had in my two months of experience. Thank you, Geza. Thank you, Doctor. I hope that we meet again, and not under a circumstance where I am falling into your belly button. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be interviewed by you. Well, there you have it, folks. I believe we answered most questions surrounding black holes in my interview with Dr. Geza today. But as always, there are more mysteries of the universe out there, and I plan to get to the bottom of them all. I'm Stacy Quasar, and this has been News at the Speed of Light. Thank you.